Behold, thou art fair, my beloved. Yea, pleasant. Also, our bed is green. What is this? Considering that Song of Solomon is pure prophecy. On the first level of prophecy, where the bride references those that love the groom, and remember Messiah spoke of himself as the groom, thus those that love him, he wants us, the groom wants us to realize something. It is his bed because he's speaking of our bed, right? So not only the bride's, but his. Messiah's deathbed was green. If you think about nature, green is a sign of life. When something is green, it is alive. Messiah's deathbed was filled with life because he died and rose. And if you think of a bed, imagery that ties with death is applicable there because the bed, one's bed is the place of going down, of closing your eyes, of lying down, of seizing and of rest. To Messiah, death is but sleep because he rose and he says to the bride behold you're going down your bed is green we will we will rise it is incredible in the first level we find the bride we that love the group we are to stay true to jesus jesus means god's salvation in other words we are to stay true to the fact that god saves us and not be confused in the end time thinking we can do it ourselves our salvation is in god and staying true to him those that love him will will find persecution therefore we find in end time those that don't join the great deception the one world religious doctrine end up in bitterness the woman of songs lies with bitterness with myrrh between her breast on that first level of prophecy and the groom tells her behold your bed is green by the bed of the groom and he reminds us of that in the time that we're speeding into the time of great persecution of those that stay true to him and we find that she is rising in chapter 5 by the voice of the groom and that is what we must remember on that first level of prophecy but there is more because God has placed prophecy in the woman and all those descriptions among the first bride and groom couple that we read of in Genesis that seem so unusual to us the fact that the origin of the one that we think of is Eve but she's actually not called Eve in the Bible she's called Isha which ties with Isha tying with the togetherness with the fire it was taken from him separated from him redirected at him given to him as a bride and she's called strength of his strength, bone of his bone. The righteous justice, the fiery wrath of God was taken from and redirected at Jesus, the salvation of God. It is the slain section of the lamb because the lamb was slain, he can proclaim in that unit, in the togetherness of Jesus who has died, he can proclaim life to us. Therefore, we find that the groom calls the, the bride, the Isha, that ties with the fire, the mother of life by his death he proclaimed life to us we find here in song of solomon that prophecy it is in all the descriptions so far we're in song of solomon towards the end of the first chapter already but line by line word by word the groom describes the bride and he has that scene of salvation who can make the justice of god the fiery wrath of god that we deserve sing salvation but him only he can make the unlikely one that woman sing the song of salvation the song of the messiah the song of the prince of peace the son of david referenced by the name of solomon it is awesome and it is his song and it's literally that it's all about him when you go to the depth of the prophecy so in this video Considering the deepest layer of prophecy where the woman references the prophecy that God has encoded in the woman, the fiery justice and the wrath of God, when he says to her that she is fair, and he calls her, Thou art fair, my beloved, dear, pleasant, also our bed is green. What is he saying? Behold, thou art fair, he says. The word that's translated in the English as fair, in the Hebrew ties with brightness, thus... Behold, you are bright, says he to her. See the brightness, all right? See the brightness of his associate. Now, in that image, remember, they're speaking about see the brightness of the associate. In other words, see the fire's flame, which is certainly bright. 
See the brightness of the fire. See the brightness of the fire. See the Messiah, the, the one that is boiling there in the fire and see the greenery of his bed. Where was that shown? The fire amid greenery. Remember the burning bush sign that was shown there to Moses. Where from God speaking amid that bush of redemption and his holy name? Jesus is the one in the image of greenery. His deathbed is green. Remember that was what intrigued Moses. The bush is burning. See the brightness of the fire. It is burning. See the boiling. But it is green. See the Messiah dying. The brightness of the son of boiling, the son of David, who stood with a crown of thorns. That bush was a thorn bush. Who was amid the thorns, speaking from the midst of thorns, and yet lived. Who has life? Who rose? See. See the boiling Messiah and the greenery. Where from God spoke amid the thorns of life, of redemption, and he said that his name is the God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, and that is his memorial unto all generations. It is his memorial unto you and I today. A memorial is, in other words, something that you must remember. What must we remember? That God is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And what does that mean? Apart from the Messiah being born from that light. What does those names mean? God is using them in a, prof in a prophetic declaration. Because he is the God of what's prophesied in Abram's name. The God of our gathering in. The God of bringing in the multitude. So that they can, like Isaac, rejoice Isaac was the one that was taken off the altar. Isaac was headed to have the fire, but he escaped it. He was taken off the altar by the ram, the one that God has provided in the stead of, of Isaac, that stood there with his horns in the thorns. Jesus stood with his head in the crown of thorns. He was provided in the stead of us who, like Isaac, is destined to, to go on the place of having the wrath of God. But we are taken off. We are set free. Rejoice, beloved. In the God of Abram, Isaac, in the God of bringing in the multitude so that they can rejoice and be like the supplanter, the name's meaning of Jacob. The supplanter, Jacob was the one that was pulled into life by holding on to the heels of his brother. And we are pulled into life by holding on to the heels of Messiah who has opened the tomb, who has opened the womb, giving us life. We will rise because he took our verdict. We have life. We can be pulled into life, burst into life by holding on to him. See the brightness of the wrath of God that came on Jesus, who stood with his crown of thorns, and yet his bed is green. And understand, God is the God of your life, of your gathering in by him, who has provided one in the stead of you to take the fire like that ram, so that you can rejoice and hold on and being pulled into life. By him. May your lips praise him together with me. May your heart praise him together with me. Hold on to your only groom. He loves you.